and we're going live. Everyone, just bear with us one moment. I am going to give our latecomers a couple more seconds to get in before we begin. Hello everyone, my name is Dion Cook. I work in member services at Avixa and welcome to designing a digital signage project with Spinetics, Aria, and the HMP 400. It is presented by George Preston and this webinar is brought to you today by our, our sponsor, Spinetics. Before I hand over the presentation to George, here are a few housekeeping items. For those viewing live, today's webinar qualifies for one renewal unit for the CTS, CTSD, and the CTSI. Please allow up to seven business days before they become available on your transcripts. If you have any issues, please email us at webinars at avixa.org. The webinar will be approximately 45 to 60 minutes and all attendees will be placed on mute. If you have any questions during the presentation, please enter them in the Q&A window only so today's moderator can address them at the end of the webinar. To access the Q&A window, simply move your cursor to the bottom of the live screen video box and locate the Q&A icon and type away. You will have access to this recorded webinar at avixa.org forward slash webinar within about five to seven business days. Now off to George. Please take it away. Thanks, Dion, and thanks everyone for being here. Good afternoon. Good morning. Before getting started, uh, I want to extend the wishes of uh, of, of good health from everyone at the Spinetics team to you, your team uh, and your family. So as Dion said, I'm George Preston. I'm the North America Sales Director for Spinetics. I'm based here in the US in Austin, Texas. Today we're going to be looking at designing a system in response to an RFP. With the new range of products from Spinetics, including our cloud solution, Spinetics Aria, and the new over-the-air player feature licenses on the H&P 400, which are a departure from our, our previous architecture, it might seem a bit daunting how to choose what specific products go where in your next design. So in the next 30 minutes or so, we'll go through a sample RFP, step by step, finishing with the final design, the bit of materials and the suggestions around services for your offer to the client. And that should leave us plenty of time left at the end for questions. But uh, as Dion uh, mentioned, please do feel free to ask your questions during uh, the, the, the deck. If there's anything I see which I can answer on the fly, I will do. But if not, we'll get to that at the end. We're going to be looking at a fictitious client today, so don't spend any time looking up over edge distribution. Uh, I've made them up, but I've pulled information from their RFP from 10 or so RFP and uh, uh, specifications that I've worked with uh, in the recent months. And so here's a sort of sample RFP. Of course, a real RFP would be much longer, a bit more complex than this, and it would talk about other things as well, but I'm focusing just on the digital signage part. 
And what I want to do is pull specific words and references in what the client has asked for, uh, highlight those so that we can make sure that our demo to the client uh, and the way we build the project is right for what they have in mind. So first of all, Overage distribution, not that it matters uh, the specifics, but they're a consumer goods company and they're a small to medium sized business. They have said they require a solution for a content management system to manage digital signage. Everyone always asks for a content management or CMS these days. Overedge should be able to use the CMS to update content in the templates with no assistance from the successful proponent. We're seeing language or la language like this or language to this effect more and more in RFPs. And uh, we, we attribute it to the fact that many clients are coming out of three or five year contracts with other providers where towards the end of the contract, they're probably not that happy with the amount of service that they're getting or they find that they are, are essentially being told, well, if you want to make any significant changes, you need to pay for services. What people want is to be autonomous. They want to be independent, not just at the beginning, but years into the project as well. And we're going to show them how to do that because it's a core value from Spinetics. The system should be compatible with all existing displays and new displays. That's quite standard language in lots of RFPs, taking advantage of full resolution and quality. But there's a detail here because what we, what we mean when we say new display models, what clients normally mean here is they mean 4K. And if they're talking about 4K and they want to take advantage of the full resolution and quality, then what they need is a player which is natively 4K, not just the video output being 4K, but all of the content that they assemble is 4K. They don't have limitations. And if they're using HTML content, that is 4K as well. That's important because the HMP 400 from Spinetics has been designed to deliver in full 4K 60 Hertz with no compromises. Many lower powered devices like set top boxes and system on chip players struggle to do real 4K for anything other than video. Or if they do allow things on top of the 4K image or as well as the 4K image, they struggle with transparency or perhaps they only allow you to decode one video at a time. So we're offering full comprehensive 4K. The system should allow multiple users uh, to manage content. That immediately tells me that we should lead with Spinetics Aria, which is our cloud solution. Why? Because if multiple users want to manage content, giving them desktop software is going to be too cumbersome. We can include features from the Elementi expert software, but this means we lead with Aria. The system should allow different users to have access to post content to different screens based on location or other characteristics. This really is a way of talking about a feature called tagging. Now I've got a mouse here, so it's a bit difficult to write, but tagging is a really powerful feature and it's something that is implemented in Spinetics area very comprehensively. And in a lot of other systems, tagging doesn't really exist. You're forced to instead have a sort of directory folder tree topology type of doing things, which is much more uh, uh, suitable when you've got very, very large systems. But actually if we skip forward in the RFP here, we're only looking here for 18 displays. So tagging is something which we're gonna focus on. Then there's another option here, which is the ability to send messages for emergency broadcasts. This is implemented in ARIA and it's called alerts. And then there's an interesting thing after this, which is the integration with the existing EMS as an emergency management system, very common, although this is a uh, enterprise user is very common in uh, universities and public sector to have the ability to to completely stop what's on the screen and then uh, warn people about something. Uh, and they, they know that this is to be provided optionally. And that means that they're open to some customization, which I think is a, a, an interesting thing to note. We always want to be clear about what customers can get out of the box and what needs customization. Customization is really what they're saying here. System should send power commands so the screens enter sleep, we can do. And the system should support, should support live streaming video for company-wide events. Well, company-wide events to me is internal video. That means they want to support multicast video from encoders, not just playing a video from YouTube or something that they found on the internet. And that needs special support, which we can deliver with one of the feature licenses on the 400. Dashboards, very common request these days, and other internal web content will need to be displayed on the system. 
What is important about it being internal web content? Well, internal web content usually means Power BI, Dynamics, Salesforce, SAP, Tableau, Social Sprout, and countless other dashboard type systems which give ERP, CRM, customer uh, insight reporting. Internally, anyone can usually go to these dashboards on their PC and they just get the dashboard, but that's because they're using single sign-on. Most signage systems are not integrated in providing single sign-on. So what Spinetics does is it has in our Elementi software, a password word robot, which means we can automatically log in to these pages. And that sounds like a really obvious feature that everyone should have, but you'd be really surprised how when I've looked at the RFP responses from other companies and how they deal with authenticated pages, they actually suggest going and putting, plugging in keyboard and a mouse into the player once a week and logging into the page, which is obviously not acceptable. So we're going to use auto login for internal web content. Then this section here we're going to look at at the end, really this customer knows they want service. They want after sale support, uh, they are interested in phone access, response times, SLA, uh, et cetera. And they've separated reactive and proactive support. So they want to know what happens if something doesn't work. Are you going to find out? Are they going to tell you? And they've specified that they want a three-year contract. So that's good because it means we can start uh, designing for those three years. Proactive maintenance, so that someone's responsible for upgrading the system, even if something doesn't go wrong. And then a bit more customization here, which is template development. Now, template, template development is a funny one because what most people think is, well, I, I want to put that in the RFP because I don't want to be stuck designing templates on my own. We will include template development for customization, but actually what we really want to show the customer is that they can use this tool without needing to do template development. Okay, let's move on to looking at what the products we're going to, uh, the, the real products we're gonna to use to fulfill this need, these needs. I'm, I'm just gonna uh, appeal to Dion and the team because I saw a few people put their hands up. I didn't see any questions come in. Don't know if people have done that to say hello or because they had a, a problem. If you, uh, if you do need anything, please, please use the question panel. So looking here at the products and services from Spinetics. Many of you on the call will already know Spinetics from the nearly 14 years of history we have in the market. But to keep things straightforward today, we're really looking at the newest product in our line, which is the HMP 400. The HMP 400 is a required product. Either the HMP 400 or the HMP 400 W, the Wi Fi variant, will be required one per screen. So we'll be looking at 18 of these displays. And then we need to choose one of the two Spinetics software products with which to lead the demo and to really lead the deployment. And because of the characteristics on the RFP introduction, I'm going to be using Spinetics ARIA, which is our cloud tool. So we're really going to lead with Spinetics ARIA. ARIA is a per player recurring license, by the way. So although we present ARIA as one thing, of course, each HMP 400 needs to have a license to use ARIA. We'll come to that later. Given the features that the customer has talked about, including uh, uh, integration with an EMS system, being able to display web content, being able to do video streaming, we need things which are beyond what can be provided in ARIA. That's important because ARIA as an end user daily tool is not meant to do everything. So we will also be specifying the expert software, Spinetics Elementi, which is a desktop application. And then depending on the Elementi features which are needed on each player, the widgets, kiosk, or systems licenses will be applied to the requisite players. And these, we'll go into a bit more detail about this in a minute, but these are cumulative licenses. So it begins with widgets, kiosk is uh, uh, added features and widgets, and then systems contains kiosks and contains widgets. And then finally, monitoring and management, which is something that often isn't there in an RFP explicitly because customers don't know what to ask for. Uh, but uh, we'll be looking at that through a separate tool, which is called Cockpit. So let's look at the first product and it's going to be the system that we're going to lead with. We're going to answer this RFP and most of the requirements with Spinetics ARIA Enterprise. Enterprise is the commercial flavor of Spinetics ARIA that we're using, but rest assured, you can just talk to the customer about Spinetics ARIA. That's the product, that's the brand that they're going to see. A few things which are important about Spinetics ARIA. First of all, this is an interface for the end user. 
This is the interface that is designed for them to use without needing training. Secondly, it's cloud-based. And we should point out that when Spinetics does cloud, we have to do it for our global audience, which is installations in over 100 countries, in more than 15 languages, and for the most secure demands. So finance, defense, high availability, manufacturing, safety scenarios. Our cloud has been tested against all of these. We've had several penetration tests from about half a dozen Fortune 500 companies just since the beginning of this year, and we always pass. For those on the, on the call who know uh, about uh, AWS, we're hosting everything on AWS. So the reason I mention that is because even at this point, many end users say, oh, we're not really sure about cloud. We don't want cloud. You'll find they're coming away from a CMS system, which is on a server, which is hosted within their infrastructure. And then the ISV software vendor comes in and makes changes. But actually, that's much less secure than cloud. What we're doing with cloud is putting, in, is putting all of the systems and infrastructure which is protected to the absolute highest letter according to the needs of the biggest cloud provider, which is AWS. And then the last thing is everyone can have an account with ARIA. There are no per user fees. That's a huge advantage, especially with an enterprise user where they're probably coming away from a system where not only do they pay per player, but they pay per user as well. We're going to show them a tool here, which anyone in the room, when you do the demo, can say, oh, actually, I could use that. It doesn't matter how junior they are. It doesn't matter if they want to give the tool to 100 subordinates in their department, you can do it, and they don't have any penalty. So how do we de demo Spinetics ARIA? Two steps. Sign up for an, a, 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 a Spinetics ARIA enterprise demo account, which is only available for you as an integrator. And you can do that at this address here. It's a bit small on the presentation, but I'll read it out spinetics.com slash aria hyphen form. Go to that address, fill in the details that's only available to professional uh, dealers, resellers, integrators, not for end users. That will give you an account with no limitations at all, which you can then use to demo Spinetics Aria Enterprise. And we're not going to be doing a walkthrough of presentations today, but Aria really does demo very well without needing to be an expert without needing to prepare lots of custom content for the user, you're going to be able to add everything they need, not to do their exact content for them, but to see that they can develop the kind of content that, that uh, the RFP is asking for. So really, I say, be for, become familiar with demoing our enterprise using the free account we give you. You can even do this without a player. There are some limitations to doing a demonstration without a player, but by and large, you can show them how the interface works. How do you get them to discover it? Well, you can do a demo. If they say, I want to look at it myself, I want my team to look at it, you can temporarily invite the customer to your demo account. Remember to put an end date on that test because you don't want your demo account full of end users and it, it probably stimulates people to get going and do their testing and warn them that they can't see everything because they don't have hardware yet and that's gonna keep them interested, but it lets them see just how fluid and easy the interface is to use. During your demo of ARIA Enterprise, the end user is going to flag things which they can't see in the interface. And that's normal because remember, this is the interface for everyone. It's not meant to do everything. If it did, you'd need lots of training and it would be too complex. So for everything else the end user needs, there's Elementi. Elementi is the expert tool designed for adding more complex functionality to Spinetics ARIA. When we say expert, it doesn't have to be a third party. The end user often says, well, we have someone like that. So the expert could be you, if as the dealer you want to offer them those services, but it could be someone at the customer, it could be a third party. The beauty of this model is the end user can say, actually, I'd like to get started with everything in ARIA right now because we're ready. And then we can find the person who's gonna be our expert. We can talk to you about your services and we can get Elementi and we can do all that at a later date. The license architecture for Elementi is also very simple. It's a single PC license and then it can address an unlimited number of devices. So you don't need to talk about uh, licensing per player. You don't need to talk about subscriptions. This is an application that any user will understand if they understand PowerPoint, if they understand Photoshop, in fact, if they understand anything. The key differentiator between ARIA and Elementi is ARIA is mostly static content. We give you weather, news, other things built in. But if they want to do custom connection to third-party sources and that live data answer is really the, um, 
the biggest, the, the sort of most novel request coming from customers is we don't want to do manual updates anymore. We want to talk to our Office 365 install or G Suite, or we want to get data from social networks. Elementi gives you the power to do that with drag and drop widgets. But you can then upload the content from Elementi into the ARIA cloud so it can be used like other content. That's how the integration works. Someone in the uh, comment questions has asked about getting a download of Elementi. That's easy here, www.spinetics.com slash download. That's open to anyone and you get a 30 day unlimited trial. Should you want a longer demo, talk to me. My email address is gpr at spinetics.com and I can help you with watermark sales licenses which have a much longer expiration. But the reason I didn't put that in the beginning is because I really think step one is user requirements gathering. Let's listen to what the user wants during the demo of ARIA. I'm not a fan of, of, of presentations where all you do is listen to the customer because sometimes there's a case of that people don't really know what they don't know. But if we can lead them with ARIA, show them what's possible and then reassure them uh, that everything else can be done with Spinetics ARIA, that tends to be a really good structure. I gave you my email address. If you're not within the US or Canada or Australia, uh, sales at spinetics.com is a better address. Of course, if you email me or you email sales, my team is going to pick it up and help you. Uh, there is also some YouTube tutorials. We've got a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash spinetics team, uh, which has walkthrough tutorials on how to get started, how to do everything from activate Elementi uh, to doing more advanced things like video walls. There are also some videos on there which might be quite useful when you're responding to the bid. One note here about different versions of Elementi. When you go and download the trial from the website, you'll be downloading Elementi S. Elementi S is a product that's for offline SMB installations. So it's really for a LAN of one to 10 screens, usually not using cloud. Elementi X, so I'm going to put a sort of cross in it here, not because it's not important, but because for this particular RFP, it's very clearly clear that we don't need that. Elementi X on the other end is for developers. It's more advanced. It's for building widgets, for resale, and integrating with uh, third-party systems, which are not included natively in Elementi M or S. The go-to product, the go-to version of Elementi is Elementi M. That stands for multi-user, multi-site. While all of the versions of Elementi let you create content and upload it into ARIA, Elementi M is the one that, if, that gives the customer flexibility uh, and the one I would, I would begin with. After we have given the customer the demo of ARIA, and then we've explained to them what Elementi, Elementi can do and where it's needed, we then have another piece, which is that Elementi requires licenses on the HMP 400 player to uh, enable access to the Elementi features. So every HMP 400 player out of the box comes with the ARIA cloud. If you do the demo of Spinetics ARIA and the end user says, this is all I need, you do not need to talk to them about Elementi. You do not need to talk to them about DSOS licenses. But in the case of Overedge, they've got a few specific requirements. So we think we know that we could do quite a lot with the widgets. Really, I'm sorry again about the logo here being small, but the social networks and these connections to Office 365 and G Suite, they will really pique your customer's interest. Microsoft has done a huge job of moving people to Office 365. Anyone who's not on it is pretty much almost always on G Suite. And you, being able to show the customer that with Elementi, you can pull live data from those services with no ex extra subscription is very powerful. If they want to use that content on any one player, that player needs a widgets DSOS license. And the SKU is called uh, DSOS widgets, which I'll show you in a second. For web content, like dashboards, there's the next tier of license for the player. Remember again, this is per player, is kiosks. Kiosks includes widgets, these are cumulative. The final license, which is the all singing, all dancing one, is the systems activation. Systems includes Elementi, uh, the, the widgets in Elementi, it includes HTML5, but it also adds support for third party LAN connections to systems like Crestron, AMX, and so forth, and the ability to synchronize players together to do video walls. And that live streaming requirement that the client had, if you want to do that via an RTP stream locally, then that needs the systems license. 
These licenses are really flexible. You just have a tool online where you can unlock the LMNT features on a player. You buy the license, you get a code, you put in the, I, the serial number of the player, the player can use the license. You can do it over the air, you can do it after installation, you can even do it a, a year after you've designed the project. They can be one-time or recurring. Most people choose one-time licenses because they want to associate the cost of those features with the one-time cost of the device. But if you feel that recurring OPEX costs would work better for this customer, go with the recurring option. Implicit in what we've been talking about is the HMP 400 itself. But note, I've kept this till last. And I think that's important because although this is a very capable device, we don't want to lead with hardware for the customer. I think customers aren't really that interested. If you have an HMP 400, it looks smart. It's very slim uh, design, which means it can help installations be ADA compliant. That can really help. It's also fanless and ventless and comes by default with a three-year warranty that you can extend to five. Of course, this customer specified they have a three-year project, so we're not going to try and upsell them the five-year warranty. But it's worth mentioning because most products don't come with a three-year warranty anyway, and very few of them come with an option to extend to five. 4K device, designed for 24-7 operation, manufactured by Spinetics, which is the same company that is providing all the software. That's also something that could be interesting to the people in the room who are going to be responsible for maintenance at the client premises because they definitely would have had a situation where they don't know who to call because the person making the player or the company making the player is different to the company who's made the CMS. One other thing is there are two SKUs of the HMP 400. One's Wi-Fi, one's non-Wi-Fi. You can't change between them. The non-Wi-Fi version doesn't just have the antenna removed. It doesn't have that capability. That's important because for some secure installations, especially in defense, you're not allowed to have Wi-Fi on board. So we remove it from that version. Please make sure that you know in advance which players, if any, in the deployment need Wi-Fi. So summing up, when we talk to the customer, we find out, surprise, surprise, it's a bit more complex than the RFP said. And actually there are three offices. And so the 18 players actually look a bit like this. Here's the corporate office. We've got nine devices. Here's a regional office, which has three devices. And here is a warehouse, which has six devices. All of the devices are running Spinetics Area in the cloud. And then there's a workstation in the corporate headquarters that's running the single license of Spinetics Elementi. Of course, you can have one more than one license, but typically, especially when you're combining it with Spinetics Aria, one is enough. Why do these players have different DSOS licenses applied? Because they're doing different things. So remember back in the RFP, they said they wanted to see internal web content. Well, it turns out that, I'm sorry, the titles of the offices have gone here, but in the regional office here, they want to show some dashboards because they, that's a sales team. Well, uh, the uh, dashboards are coming from Office 365. That's Excel data they have in OneDrive for Business. Remember, with the Office 365 widgets from Spinetics, you don't just pull data, you can drill right into a spreadsheet and pull a specific range, and then you can use the charting widgets to actually visualize that content, and it's updated in real time. That was enough to impress the client into having that on two of their screens. But the third player in the regional office is perhaps in a reception, and that's good with just the content you get in the area, Spinetics Area Cloud. And then over here in the head office, there are some more of these screens that are doing general content just with the Spinetics Area license. But they wanted two screens to be able to show that internal video. If you remember right back in the beginning, when we looked at the RFP, there was a request for company-wide events. Whenever I see that, I think that's a town hall. This is a company where they want, to, they want to do something where perhaps it's part of a bigger organization and they want to have everyone gathered around watching something about the company. Well, that's what these are for. Remember that live streaming from a local source, you can do internet streaming just with the kiosk license, but from a local source, you need the systems license. So we added that to these two players. And then in the warehouse, that's where all of these systems needed access to a web dashboard from a pr proprietary system that doesn't feed into Office 365 uh, uh, or G Suite. And for that, we need the kiosks license. Just while you digest that slide, I'm gonna have a look at some of the questions that have come in because some of them are quite good. Uh, so someone asked if I could give the URL for the demo software, spinetics.com slash download for that software. And it's spinetics 
www.aria.com slash aria hyphen form for the aria enterprise license the demo software you download from the website is good for 30 days uh, if you if you need longer uh, just contact me i will send you a license that's good for the rest of the calendar year gpr at spinetics.com please send it from the domain that's associated with your company no gmail addresses please and then someone's asked about uh, third-party uh, connectivity from AMX. Anything like Crestron, uh, AMX, Extron, they are all using TCP commands. You can open a socket on the device and manipulate it in real time. Very, very powerful feature, completely supported, and it requires the system's license on any player which is going to react to that command. There's a question about using any player on the physical science network. Uh, within this presentation, I'm talking about the HMP 400. There are third-party devices as well. Uh, the NUC, for the Intel NUC is available from Simply NUC in the US, and that supports uh, some of these features. But you need a player which is running the Spinetics operating system. That's the thing. Uh, it needs to run DSOS. Of course, if you buy the HMP 400, it's dedicated to that purpose. Uh, and there was another question about uh, recurring cost. Does recurring convey any additional features over one-time cost? For the DSOS licenses, no, it doesn't. That's purely a different way of presenting the same cost. So let me just skip back to that slide on the licenses. One-time or recurring license, if you see the price list, you'll see that after three years, it's about the same as paying for the one-time license. It's simply because different industries and different sectors like sometimes to see that cost put out in a different way. I'm going to carry on just quickly because we're getting up to time talking about some of the optional features I talked about. If you think about what we've seen so far, we've covered everything that the end user asked for in the features. We've got the kiosks feature for doing web pages, which we can log into automatically, really unique. We can show widgets coming from Office 365 or Google Suite in their remote areas without anyone there needing to do any administration. And in their corporate headquarters, we can do live streaming of video. Uh, and we can also do the widgets content there to match what they have in the remote office. But we haven't yet talked about any of the things in services. So there's a couple of products which are just as important. One of them is the update plan for Elementi. So I said no subscription to Elementi and I meant it. Once you buy Elementi, it works forever. But for updates, you get a free update period after activation of one year. So 11 months after the customer activates, Spinetics releases a major new version with uh, more features, um, security improvements, connecting to different third party sources and so on. The end user gets a free update to that. Of course, you need to help the end user with that upgrade, test it, go in and do the installation, make sure the firmware on the devices is uh, matching, uh, but that, there's no charge. If at any point in the future, the end user wants to take advantage of updates, then they can buy an update plan, which gives them another year of updates. They can wait one year, they can wait five. They only need to buy an update plan for one year. So we know in this case that the end users said they expect this to be a three year lifetime project. So for years two and three, they need to buy an update plan. It makes sense to specify that in advance. Management and monitoring with Spinetics is something we keep out of band. We don't put that into the cloud tool. And that's deliberate because we really think the use case for someone using the software every day is not to do advanced diagnostics of the player. In the ARIA cloud, we do give the end user the ability to see if players are online, to tag those players and to arrange them so they can call someone if something's gone wrong. But for really digging in deep, looking at historic performance of devices, being able to do proactive maintenance, we have a dedicated tool, and this is called Cockpit. Cockpit.spinetics.com, you add the players by serial number. This is really a tool for expert use. It also does some useful features like uh, inventorying of players by serial, you can tag them, and you get to keep all your licenses in there as well. Everyone gets access to the free version of Cockpit. You get a 12 hour accuracy window. If you want to use the premium subscription, it's a separate SKU per device. You get near instant updates. You get SMS alerts. You also get a paper trail of how a player has been performing and much more granular information. For example, you can see if, this, if the cable to the screen has been disconnected. If this is necessary for the audience you're presenting to, you can first of all check that that is what they need. I always stress about doing this user requirements gathering. And then open a demo account for Cockpit at cockpit.spinetics.com. 
uh, you can demonstrate, you can look at everything in cockpit pretty much except the advanced monitoring without needing to add any sort of player. You even get the whole map of the world and if you add players, you can see where they are. It's very neat. Someone's asked uh, on the uh, questions about partners in specific countries. Um, have a look on our website, spinetics.com. Uh, go to where to buy. If you click in the top right hand corner of the website, there's a button that says buy. Scroll down and say, I am a reseller and then select your country. If, there's a, if there are distributors li listed, they're your first point of call, local currency, language, delivery, and so forth. If there isn't a distributor listed, or if you're in a country that's not listed in that dropdown, then please contact sales at spinetics.com and you're welcome to talk to us directly. Now this whole slide looks a bit daunting. I know that, and we're talking about lots of SKUs, which we don't need to know all of the details for, but for people coming back to this, when they want to be reminded of something, I wanted to just put the SKUs so it's a bit more specific. So here's our bill of materials. Player and power delivery, something about the HMP 400 and the HMP 400W that's important is that we have by default power over ethernet. So we're not supplying a power adapter in the box. If they need power for some or all of the screen locations, there's a separate SKU, which is this one, PD for power delivery, PD30. Then for the Ari Spinetics Aria Enterprise CMS, what I've shown you the quick uh, demos of, you need one per player of this Spinetics Aria Enterprise SKU. And then as we looked at the different DSOS feature licenses, annual or recurring for the players which need them. This happens to be the SKU for the permanent one, but you can have a recurring one. It's got slightly different lettering. And not to forget the one time purchase of the Elementi software. Remember the M version is the M, uh, is the go-to version. So and that has an SKU that ends in M1. And then the two things we looked at recently, cockpit for monitoring and the Elementi update plan. Optional, but for this scope, from what the customers asked for, they very much fit because the customers specified they want those services and they've told us they expect this project to have a three-year lifespan. At any other time, I'd try to encourage an extension to the warranty from three to five years using this uh, SKU, oops, sorry, this SKU here, but the customer said it's three years. So we might mention that to them, but we're not gonna put it in the bomb. And then we need to allow within the scope some customization because they want to talk to this EMS, but let's show them the alerts feature that we have built into Spinetics Area Enterprise, because for many people, this does enough for their needs. I can click on an alert. Of course, these are just templates. I can add it, edit them. And then I can say, I want this on all of my players. I press activate. And although you can't see it, all of the players I have in my office have now changed to, sh to show that alert. So often you can say to an end user, let's get started with this. And then we can work later on getting you integration with your other system. A couple of questions about, uh, <clears throat> about cloud. I don't want to get too much into answering security questions about a cloud now because we can go down a real rabbit hole, but we're using AWS. Uh, we're using our GDPR compliance is for the German implementation of GDPR, which is the strictest. Uh, we can, for certain opportunities, ensure that content is hosted in a particular geographical location. Uh, and all of the uh, federation with other logins is held in AWS Cognito. Uh, if you need any certificates or affirmations about what AWS does, speak to me. We have a bunch of PDFs we can send, which ID departments are often very happy to see. Finally, we're nearly done. I want to remind everyone that what we supply from Spinetics is only half of what the customer really needs. Everything else is the augmented solution, and that's what you're helping with your services. So I'm actually going to start on the right-hand side of the page over here. The installation of the players mounting, well, that's an obvious one. Uh, optional Wi-Fi connection, make sure that the customer has the W version of the player if they need it, need it the W variant. Provisioning into ARIA, very important. You will have requested an account for the client. ARIA Enterprise is sold indirectly, like all of our products. Uh, and then the uh, details, the, the customer's details will be in the ARIA account, but the players need to be switched on and added into ARIA Enterprise. If you do that in advance, once they get to the customer site, then the on-site job really just is a hanging and banging job. And they, as long as the players have a DHCP address and a gateway, they connect straight into the area cloud. But if, no, if there's no DHCP, you can also check that the network config is there. There's a couple of details we can do to help get quicker updates. 
if it's supported, MQTT, which is a signaling method that we use, helps ARIA update screens immediately. If MQTT, if the port isn't open, it goes down to about more like 30 second update. An IT department might be able to open it for us. But also just checking the players are functioning okay. The HMP 400 manages and monitors all of its temperature, thermal stuff, but you can make sure that in the setting where it's been installed, perhaps it's in a case, that the temperature is within the right operating constraints, all of which are detailed on our website at support.spinetics.com. In the unlikely event something were to go wrong with the device, you can provide them with swap out stock. That can be part of your service package. Coming over here on the left, there's then the ARIA Enterprise CMS license. So you need to open the Spinetics ARIA Enterprise account on their behalf, add the devices, add the users, choose the user roles that different uh, users are going to have according to their demands. That's a, a listening process. Often, again, it's one of those things where people don't really know until you take them through it. They're going to want a particular billing period. It may not be 12 months. Aria and Spinetics Aria Enterprise is billed annually. It might be that they want to bill the next three months and then their financial year begins. So then you want it annually from then. Tagging the players in the media or showing them how to do it, uploading their media in the first place. Those are all small things, but things that the customer really appreciates when you're helping them get started. And then here, looking at the software, well, Elementi needs installing. So someone's going to need to have temporarily uh, local admin access to a PC. We want to make sure that's the right PC. The person knows what they're, uh, what's being installed. They know how to open it. There's training on Elementi, which is available typically through your distributor. You are also very welcome to resell Elementi training services or to sell Elementi training services yourselves by taking advantage of all of the tutorial and webinars we have online. Applying the DSOS licenses to the players is an important one. Remember, when we looked at the diagram before, some of the players have different features. You can move the licenses around, but really for deployment, you want to have all the licenses in the right place. Otherwise, you could remove a license later and the content on the screen doesn't look like what the end user expects, which is not great. I put in italics here some things which are really going above and beyond. So here, connecting channel sources, Office 365 needs a one-time authentication, fairly straightforward, but good to take a user through that. And then adding all of their products into cockpit for inventory tracking so they don't lose their license. But you can go further and offer them extended telephone support, perhaps even out of hours. And all the, everything I'm talking about here is happening at the beginning of the installation. But what about when six months has passed, everyone's happy with the system, but the knowledge has begun to drift away and perhaps people that knew it, the admin have left you a service to onboard a new person with training when he or she starts. And then on the cockpit side, players need to be added to a cockpit. The premium features of cockpit need setting up with the SMS and email destinations and an SLA around what you're going to do with co what cockpit tells you. It's no good saying, well, I've got an alert to say someone's unplugged the screen or a network segment's gone offline. Uh, what you want to do is be able to tell the end user how quickly you're going to fix it for them. And that often comes into the realm of kind of general project management around a project. project. Successful integrators will provide the end user with a single point of contact. They'll take stake stakeholder feedback. That sounds a bit daunting, but really a, a well-constructed questionnaire that's circulated internally through a communications person two or three months afterwards can really help. Schematics, diagrams, checking that you have remote access to the system if the customer requests it so you don't find out a month later that you need to make another 100 mile round trip uh, always prudent and you can assure them that the system's secure with all the license files that i can provide you with if you want help actually constructing that proposal document i have a template from our uh, crm system which i can design with all of your details and the customer's details with a quote template with all of the legal provisos in place, all of the S, uh, uh, line items and SKUs with that pricing. So just contact me, gpr at spinetics.com if you'd like help. We're nearly finished. There are a few questions that have come in. I wanted to just remind everyone that this is one of many webinars we do, uh, including deep dives into our software. So there's an introductory training webinar, which is, uh, I suppose, uh, more about an introduction to the Spinetics portfolio and the benefits. And then in German, English, and several other languages, we have deep dives into the ARIA, Spinetics ARIA tool and into Elementi. I'm bringing up my last slide, but I'm going to switch to answering some questions. If there's anything that you've been thinking of asking, please do use the comments window to, 
to answer it now. Someone's asked about uh, third party hardware uh, for a switcher. Yes, I, I mean, the, the, the answer is to third party integration. Spinetics really relies on standards. We don't have SDKs, we don't have things you need to unlock. Uh, we support standards, we document the standards very thoroughly on our support website at support.spinetics.com. And at our support website, if I could type properly today, you'll see huge amounts of detail about everything. So for example, if you want to be doing video streaming, there's a page here which goes into huge detail about all the different levels and layers and things which are supported and products which have been tested. It's thousands and thousands of pages or maybe several hundred pages on details of the product. There's an event management system uh, question. So anything about integration with event management systems, if it's uh, a third party system, the answer is almost certainly we can interface with it because these systems are designed to be in interacted with, but that might need some customization or it might be something you can do with the custom widgets you get in Elementary X, for example, if the system has an API we can talk to that doesn't need a login, you can do that with Elementary X and we can show you how to do that. If uh, the system has something proprietary, either we need to develop it for you or find a partner. You have many partners across the US and Canada for Spinetics, all doing special things, non-competing partners who are listed on this web page here. And they've all got little icons next to their name about what they can do. Questions about training course links and certification, uh, I will, I think I'll hand over to Dion to answer those. Okay, uh, yeah, it's in terms of certification, it will be uh, one RU for CTS, CTSI and CTSD. Get more on that in a second. So uh, George, is that it for you? Yes, I think so. I, there's actually a question at the top. The person asking it, it's been very patient because I didn't see it. Uh, thanks, Aslam. Um, if your customer cannot use cloud, and that's, that's still common, especially in highly secure scenarios, Elementi, the Elementi software, also works by pushing directly to players on the LAN. And in that case, there's no ARIA, uh, Spinetics ARIA Enterprise. Uh, there isn't the cloud system, but you do get all the features that you get in Elementi and you still need to apply the DSOS licenses to the players. I think for this RFP, I really, and whenever I do now, if an RFP doesn't mention cloud or on-prem, I lead with Spinetics Aria because I think it's just such a, a good product to demo with. That's everything for me, I think, Dion. All right. Well, George, thank you so much. And thank everyone for listening to today's webinar, Designing a Digital Signage Project with Spinetics, ARIA, and the HMP 400. This recording will be available on avixa.org forward slash webinars within about seven business days, and your one renewal unit credit will be applied to your transcripts within those seven days. Uh, if you have any trouble with that, please contact webinars at avixa.org. And just a brief important note for CTS holders, if you have registered for the webinar with uh, an email address other than the one we have on file for you. You actually won't get credit for attending because we won't know you're there. So uh, we can fix it though. Just email your account rep, someone like me, and let them know that you used the wrong email address and they'll correct it for you. Now, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Spinetics, and a huge thank you to George for helping us to understand designing a digital signage project. Uh, we hope you uh, have enjoyed this webinar and please have a great day. <laughs>